In this video, let's prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. And the reason why we're, we're working with this inequality is because it's needed for the proof of the cremer rao lower bound. And so the, we're sort of taking this in stages where we will prove the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and then we'll take that inequality and we'll apply it in a very particular case uh, to find the cremer rao lower bound. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality uh, states, you can write this in many different ways, and if you've taken a linear algebra course, you may have seen it in a different context uh, related to inner products and norms. But uh, we can think about covariances and variances as related to uh, inner products and norms, and so the result is, is general enough um, that it holds in, in this case. So if we have two random variables, x and y, and we square the covariance, that will be less than or equal to the variance of x times the variance of y. So the basic idea of this proof is uh, to basically write down a quadratic equation that we know will be greater than or equal to zero and then uh, use the minimum value, which will still be greater than or equal to zero, um, and plug in the minimum value and get the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality out of it. So in order to come up with that quadratic, we'll start out with some variable t that is just a real number. And we can note that um, the following is greater than or equal to zero. So I'll write zero is less than or equal to the variance of x plus t times y. And the reason that's true is just a fact about variances, right? All variances are um, non-negative. And then we can use properties of variances. Uh, Basically, we have the variance of x plus ty, where t is some real number. That's equal to the variance of x plus t squared times the variance of y. And we don't know that x and y are independent. We haven't made that assumption. So we'll have to deal with the covariance term, which will be 2 times the covariance of x and ty. Now it turns out that uh, if you have a t in one of the arguments of the covariance, the t can come out. If you had a t in both, then the t would come out squared. Um, and so I'll, I'll make that change here. We will basically have 2 times t times the covariance of just uh, x and y. Now to make life a little bit easier, uh, let's just label these uh, variances and covariances. So we'll call this one C, this variance of Y A, and this covariance of X and Y B. And so what we end up getting here is that some function, quadratic function of T, which is equal to a times t squared plus 2 uh, t, well let's do 2 b times t plus c is greater than or equal to 0. Now if this is true for any t, right, any t in r, then it'll certainly be true for the t that minimizes this thing because the minimum will be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, so this inequality uh, will hold at, at uh, g where we plug in the minimum value for t. Now we get the minimum value uh, of this function uh, 
right, by just doing some calculus. Right, the derivative of g with respect to t should be 2 times a times t uh, plus 2 times b and then we set that equal to 0 and we solve for t we should get um, the minimizer to be equal to negative b over a. So that's the minimizer of g of t and of, cor of course you can get the minimum value of g of t by plugging in the minimizer and so that's what we do down here. Right? The inequality, this inequality here, will hold at the minimum value. So we know that a times negative b over a squared, so we're just plugging in t min in for t, uh, plus 2 times b uh, times negative b over a plus c will be greater than or equal to 0. So we can do some simplifying here. So the first term should be b squared uh, over a and the second term should be uh, we'll, we'll have a, a minus uh, 2b squared over a uh, plus c is greater than or equal to 0 and simplifying further we should have a minus b squared over a plus c greater than or equal to zero and then if we uh, basically we we have if we simplify further we'll have a b squared uh, should be less than or equal to a times c and that's because um, well, if we brought the c over, it would be a negative c. And then multiply through by a, we'd get a times c uh, is less than or equal to negative b squared. And then if we multiply by the negative 1, we flip the sign. And now if we just plug back in, our b is the covariance of x and y. And so the square of that is less than or equal to a, which is the variance of y, and times c, which is the variance of x. And that's exactly the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So we've, we've proven it. And uh, in the next video, we'll see how to use the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality to prove the Cremere-Rau lower bound.